let's uh, let's get going here. Uh, welcome to the Planning Board meeting for Monday, uh, July 27th, 2015. Uh, thank you, HCAM, for uh, taping the uh, the meeting tonight. We are missing a couple of members, so that's always helpful. We are attempting tonight, potentially, to remote call in, which is allowed by the rules. Uh, for one of our members, uh, Frank Durso. However, we've been unsuccessful so far of getting a hold of him, so uh, we'll see where that goes. The agenda tonight, uh, we've got a bunch of small interesting things. We have one major public hearing for uh, uh, continued for the Marathon Solar. Uh, and then the last thing I'd like to do in starting the uh, beginning of the meeting is we are looking for volunteers for the Zoning Advisory Committee. And uh, basically that meeting, committee will start meeting in uh, September time period and it makes recommendations to the Planning Board uh, for zoning uh, articles. And that's part of our process for uh, keeping our zoning bylaws up to date. So anyone interested in uh, volunteering or wants to know more about the Zoning Advisory Committee, either uh, contact myself or Elaine, and we'll be happy to, or any member of the Planning Board, really, uh, and uh, they'll be happy to uh, kind of explain what goes on there. So anyway, we're looking for 10 to 12 people for as active as possible. That's what we've had the last couple of times. So let's start off. Uh, we have a conceptual plan for 25 Ash Street. Uh, Chuck and Crowder. Excuse me, folks. Joe Macronat, Brian Gasset. Uh, what we uh, had hoped to do tonight was take a couple minutes of your time just to try and get uh, gauge the. Uh, the interest in um, a project that Brian is considering at uh, 25 Ash Street. It's a 7.9 acre parcel on the east side of Ash Street with an existing historic home here and barn and then uh, fields and um, lawn area associated with that use. We are about 400 feet um, southerly of Center School. And, um, the chief advantage we see in um, moving this thing forward is the fact that um, we are in the RA district and we can get a couple of um, not attractive lots here behind the existing home and then provide uh, something of value to the town in this area in the rear that Bryant has uh, no interest in trying uh, to develop. Um, the, I guess the, the key with this project is the connectivity. Um, the abutter here to the north is the town of Hopkinton. There are a couple of homes. The Camborellis home is here. A couple of uh, the Pavlov and um, McMillan homes are here. But the abutter here at the rear is the town of Hopkinton, the center school property. Now, as you move easterly, you move from our parcel through what the town has taken that was associated with the open space plan for Presbrick Lane, um, Hearthstone Road, and the open space to that, and then another piece of town land, and you are at the westerly border of Legacy Farms. Here is the Legacy Farm Road south uh, with Wood Partners and the Pulte development through there. So there exists a connection with this parcel that Brian would be willing to um, donate to the town to make a connection from Center School across this over the NSTAR easement, um, which is an easement over the Hain property, but owned in fee across the town land. So the ability to cross NSTAR this parcel and then hook up with uh, a lot of open space heading easterly. Let me ask one question. Would you kind of define where the three new lots would be, kind of, or all the new lots are real? So what we wanted to do was preserve that historic structure here. So 
along the uh, northerly boundary line would be a right of way to establish our frontage and uh, access to a way. We would like to um, construct a 12 foot wide driveway that would give us one home out behind the historic structure and one off the end of that circle. So, historic structure, two new homes. And does this lot, is this the lot proposed lot line for this or where's, where's this line? <clears throat> the thought process was that as we move through this, we'd have to do something to offset the changes, chiefly for stormwater. So this is included in that bar, so we anticipate that if we do anything to satisfy a concern raised about stormwater, it would be at this location. And then this parcel here runs up to here, so it would include that easement and then this access abutting the townland. Okay, so, so then we, we would have access along here and then across for sure correct right now if you want to get over to this part of the school you have to go across the fee in star land mm -hmm. however during the school process they were <coughs> reasonable about letting us go back and forth but they wanted to negotiate the easement too but I mean it was you know they but anyway that's the only background I offer to that and then from that, you can get, like, you can get eastward, I think, pretty easy. Yeah, through. Well, not, downhill. Hill Lane, you've got Hearthstone, you've got town land here. This is Meza property, and then uh, Legacy Farms. We're only looking for the two additional. Um, there has been some talk about this abutting parcel being developed. We're not interested in um, joining with those folks, so we created or tried to emphasize to you folks that um, we don't want access off of this new subdivision road for additional lots in here. So this would be set up so that, uh, and that area restricted so that the owner of this could not sell off that excess land and create frontage and lots for the abutting property owner. We're simply looking for the two here, end of story. How do you restrict that? Just put that in ownership of somebody else? How, how, what's the plan for that? That would probably have to be deed to each of these. Uh, uh, association. Uh, association. The goal is how we do it. Um, we'll obviously have to, uh, to figure that out, but the goal is to limit access from that property next door. Are we looking at a 40-foot wide roadway or a 12 foot wide driveway. Right of way, 40 foot wide, and then a 12 foot wide driveway to access these two. Seemed overkill for a 20 foot or 18 foot wide surface for two homes. The idea was something in keeping with your uh, regulations for subdivision that folks have seen before, so it didn't seem so out of the ordinary to ask for a 20 foot right of way or something like that didn't want to do was get bogged down in the weeds later on had we wished we I think, I, I think the 40 water. foot is what our regs say and we could waive that to make it less if, you know because I'm not sure you need so because he's showing the 40 foot wide but only looking for 12 yeah the, so way the construction standards if you will down yeah. to 12 foot wide uh, with the same sorts of issues make sure that we can get on to Ash Street safe site distance safe stopping distance that we can construct this driveway uh, so that folks can't access their homes, but construct something a little less than the subdivision road. So you're only going to be entering the property via the Ash Street. Yes, correct. correct. So is that a private roadway? Um, I would say yes. Yeah, that's probably what that's going to you're calling it a road, not a private drive. A roadway because we need to establish frontage on a way. They're going to ask for waivers not to construct a road, but just to, and then build something in line with the driveway, kind of like McDermott, I think would be the closest. I, I, I'd just like to get some kind of assurances through town council that these kinds of restrictions can actually stand up, you know, 
it just seems to me that once it's a roadway, it opens the door for people on the other side to say, I have a right to build there. They, I, I, th I think what he was, they were doing, Claire, is, well, go ahead and answer it, I guess. Well, what we, the concern was raised, Claire, as we move through this, so the roadway, the right of way to, to create the frontage mm -hmm. and access was shifted away from the boundary line, southerly, mm -hmm. and a 10 to 12 foot wide strip was going to be set aside in there, owned by some group, the association of the two homeowners, that was restricted so that this gentleman could not sell this off to the abutting property owner to create access to the new roadway. So the mechanism is yet to be determined, but the goal is to limit so that no activity, no lots are created off of this road, road A, for abutters to the north. No, I understand what you claim, what you stated you intended to do. I would just like assurance for this board that <coughs> that can hold water <coughs> from a legal challenge that, you know, you couldn't get one of those if you've only got a homeowners association of like two or three homeowners and somebody <coughs> is willing, you know, 20 years down the road to say it really doesn't matter to me or I'll pay you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, We've had more than one situation where, when there was a legal challenge, uh, it, it it didn't hold up. I, I just, uh, I like the sign of the assurances. I would just like assurance for this board from a legal, legal perspective that that is sustainable. <coughs> That's just, just a comment. One or two, one or two people as an association might not be enough to exactly. stop what's going on. Exactly. I think it's a fair point. Um, I will make one other observation. I don't know how it might enter into your plans. Um, I'm glad to see your plans are to maintain the existing Hain home at 25 Ash. It is historic. Um, we've also passed historic preservation bylaw that, in order to aid saving historic properties allows certain concessions, waivers to be granted from standard requirements to facilitate that. So I, I'm just throwing that out as another as another resource to move this forward okay. that uh, you know could help you mm -hmm. uh, possibly. I think all the lots they're creating are all of standard. Or meet meet all the yeah. the the square footage. Yeah, all of the so RA's far. own 15,000 hundred right. foot yeah. frontage. Right. The standard is, is pretty low. Yep. And even if you met the ones with without water, in case somehow the town didn't give you water for those two back lots, I don't know. You know, you still meet the standard for that. Uh, question How long is the dead end street? Uh, we have proposed now 394. Uh -huh. So it will be. With the, depending how you want to define uh, this animal as we go through this every time, 394 at the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. So 50 foot wide, so 444. So, Shorter than the Catherine Drive yeah. um, roadway right next door. How do members feel about, about this? I mean, you know, we, there are, our standards for those are, Elaine, correct me if I'm wrong, exceptional circumstances. And we've taken exceptional circumstances in the past with the gift of land to the town as one, and whether it's connectivity and things like that. Uh, I asked Ken Parker to come by. Ken, do you want to say something about this from a trails aspect? or? So, uh, so we're trying to connect uh, the Upper Charles Rail Trail from Milford to uh, Hopkins State Park and over to Ashland. And one of the ways that we are hoping to do that is to go down from the center school uh, over to Legacy Farm South, which would pass fairly close to this property and perhaps actually might actually require us to try to seek an easement from the, the property owners. I'm talking, I believe, here on the part that you're not planning on developing. Well, we would get that land as part of that exactly. deal. So that would go yeah, to the so, town. so that that is a value to us in that regard. And it may also be a value to us to get to that land by going off of Ash Street. So uh, this trail is going to be a trail that would be open to the public. So uh, 
could be of value to determine whether or not the, the driveway you're talking about would be one that would be amenable to having a, a, this look, this continuous rail trail uh, that goes all the way from Milford to, to Ashland in, in a loop around through uh, also uh, Sherborne and, and Halston. Uh, because that, that's one of the things that we're considering. So uh, our other means of access to go down the hill is, is, is through the center school. So uh, just wanted to put that out. But we're this, certainly interested this, this in This plan here does to not plan. do your request to get from Ash Street to the back. I mean, basically. Well, it should come through. Center down the street. driveway. No. Right. Well, but, but then you come into a, right yeah. into the guy's front yard, right? Yeah, I wouldn't want to be no, no, running. Yeah, I, I don't know where the front yard is exactly. Yeah, that's right. I can't see. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So I wouldn't want to be. Yeah, you can. We're going through. That's why this was right, right. allowed so we could come in this way. So it would effectively block public access going that way then. Right, so the yeah, idea was that the access would right. be down through here. Well, that is this certainly is possible. This is going to be dated, right. donated mm -hmm. to the town. This would allow the connection to the center school right there. Right. Here. Mm -hmm. See the cross and then into yep. Yep. that associated with <coughs> Prestwick and this associated with House Stone, <coughs> more town land. Yep. And it is Legacy Farms. Okay. That would be the idea is right. connectivity right. through position. that's it. Yeah, so we, we, we could conceal the going that Okay, so other questions, uh, comments, members of the public? Members of the planning board, uh, the only thing, and we don't have to decide this tonight, whether we take parcel B and have it as open space or in general use. In general use, when the town was looking to buy this parcel as part of the of the Ash Street School Solution, mm -hmm. they were talking about potentially using par parts of parcel B as playground or other stuff. That was a slightly different project, and that's not on the table at this I was point. Say, is it on the table? Or this is is, it's not really on the table at this point. And, but center school <coughs> use, we yeah. don't know what we're going to do right. with it. Yeah. So I was going to say we don't know what's going to happen with center school. I mean, all that back land. So I mean, the, there's the connection there, but we don't know what's going to happen with any of it. I think we'd be wise not to tie our hands on any account right now where there's so many unknowns. Okay not going for straight open space, just kind of leaving it open. Just a general parcel. Yeah. Okay. I had one follow-up question, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, have we defined that there is exceptional circumstance here? Case. Well, that's kind of what we're doing tonight, in a, in a way. I mean, we're not making a final decision, but we're trying to nod to him before he spends a lot of money to decide to try to make a plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the five acres, uh, you know, a big enough in this trail connection. I, you know, that's a, a trail connection in five acres. Is that an exceptional offset. circumstance? Yeah. Is that the offset for two two houses that in that, in that area? I mean, it, it is a significant piece of connectivity. I mean, it's not just a piece of land that's isolated. It, it links important things that we've been looking at in the town. So I think it's a valuable piece. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can can one or two houses be built otherwise? Would not without a no driveway, shared driveway scenario. No, because they need frontage, and and our bylaws state that cul-de-sacs are only allowed under exceptional okay, so circumstances. It's a one-house parcel. It's a one-house parcel now, and the option is if we want to have the land and back. We allow two houses. And my question was just quickly, having now looked at the at the proposed map here, is there a connection to possible trails over in Legacy Farms? Do you see a connection of land or is there something still in the way? Roger Mezzet's land I think is still in the way. That's correct. I mean you can get to the back uh, the back little piece that's sticking out of Legacy Farms, but if you all remember, that's wet as can be back there. The 33 acres, you know. So, 
other other feelings? I, I would just add one more thing that we were looking at that center school site and looking at the 25 Ash Street. Uh, I remember seeing a potential plan that floated the idea of three houses down there as well to sort of sweeten the pot. It's not the first time the town has right. looked for mm -hmm. uh, putting additional houses in there mm -hmm. to make the rest of the land work for the town. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't bear on the decision. I'm just yeah. you know, I think the difference between that, that was the, the cul-de-sac would go through and loop over to the school. Right. Mm -hmm. And, oh, yeah, and yes. that would make it, but, right. it's, but similar. We looked at putting yeah. some more house down there yeah. to make things work. So is that trail option off the table? It doesn't sound like that's viable from your guys' perspective if they were to come down Ash Street. Is that, no. that, is that a fair assumption? Or through the roadway yeah. is not, but this connection still is. It's a back way through uh, Central Center School. Right, so that this access over this parcel and through rights we have through the easement. Does that work? Yeah, I th well, I think it could. I mean, it depends on what happens to center school. That's the only thing I want to do that. But otherwise, uh, uh, from a geographic perspective, it would work. Yeah. I mean, there are obviously a, a lot of balls in the air, a lot of unknowns. The idea was to plan this ahead to allow something of value to come out of this project from the town side. Without that right. linkage, the five acres is not, not as, as, not, not as, not as exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we control center school, so if that's a connection that is important, you know, mm -hmm. we could take a stand that whatever we design for center school has to allow sure. that. We, we hold the cards in that. Yes, we do. Yep. So, Claire, you're, you're sounding okay with this plan? I'm so just going to pull the bowl board. Yeah. Fran? Uh, I'm okay with it. No, but to your point in terms of Council looking at the other side. I thought that was a fair, I think it's a fair request. Sure. But I mean, outside of that, yeah. Well, that that could be a detail that you would do during the subdivision planning. If you know, if it, or we ask Ray one way or the other before that. Sure. Yeah, if it's subject to challenge. Yep. I'm in favor. Just a clarification question. Without this gift, the trail can't. Be connected? No. Don't know that. I, I, I don't know exactly where the property boundaries are there to know well enough, but I think it, 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 it's quite possible that for all developed, that then the trail would not be possible. No, you could go yes, through the center, center school, school property. That is owned by NSCAR. Yeah, but it's better getting down the hill with that. Sure. This is a right access right over. Mm -hmm. So this cuts off the center oh, school from the With this parcel here, you can get through. You, you, and you, this is town owned right here. Correct. Yep. That's right. Yep. So this is NSTAR. Yeah. Connection would be. NSTAR has said that they would let us cross for school purposes. So the trail was a lot less than that. But they wanted to, you know, they wanted an easement for school purposes that, you know, thou shalt maintain the distance between the wires and the ground and things like that. That's the key is as you get more sophisticated, they get more concerned about the proximity of whatever you're proposing right. to their wires. Right. They're still concerned on the other, but at least you own it by fee and, and you know. So that's a big assumption. I'm, I'm okay to consider it further, but okay. I'd be looking for that as well. John? I'm okay with it. Brian? I'm okay with it under, you know, just you know, having Ray look at it and I'd like to see more, but yeah, we can certainly move forward with it. Okay. I think you got the feeling of the committee. Great. Thank okay. you. Shit candor. Okay. okay. Um, I think we're now on, uh, we're running a little late, but that's okay. We've got plenty of time tonight. 112 one, East Main Street, the LePage property. Come on up here, please. <coughs> This is the four acres of parcel that the for sale sign is on. Yes, yes exactly. And uh, if anyone's interested in a horse farm, yes. there's four acres, 4.4 .4 acres for sale. And it's still there. available. <laughs> it's still available. Yes, this, it is. This abuts the uh, commercial property on East Main Street that Legacy Farms has. So it's kind of 
Well, why don't you yeah, it's kind of in the middle of things. I do have a look. I uh, do have a site plan if anyone's interested in looking at it uh, from something that uh, Al did a few years ago. So it's a few copies of some of little detail of a lot. So why don't we just spread one out pretty yeah. carefully? Um, we also I can show you on there too where I am. I don't know if that's easier to get everybody uh, yeah, to see. Yeah, I guess that might help too. It might help a little bit. I know my. Um, oh. okay. Right here. This is me. Yes. Oh, I can see that. Okay. Uh, basically, um, this is one of Al, obviously. Realtor, yes, Realtor. exactly. I'm going to provide feedback what the market's been telling us uh, about the property and uh, some conclusions we've drawn from uh, experience to date in our marketing efforts. Um, the history of the property is such that Val uh, uh, has had it for almost 20 years. I'm not sure if that's the exact number, but she's used it as her primary residence since yeah. she purchased it and serves as the uh, site for her horse uh, training programs both therapeutic and, and otherwise private lessons. Due to personal reasons, uh, Val has decided it's a good time for her to sell the property. Well, I, I think it is, you know, personal reasons, but it's also, um, there is no way that I could put children for adults that are challenged, you know, both physically or emotionally, or, um, on horses with the amount of construction that's next door. Horses are horses, as you all know, when they spook. Um, and it's, it, 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 it really was a huge factor for me to stop teaching there. I knew it was happening. It wasn't like it was a surprise, you know. But the time came that, you know, and now we're trying to sell it, and it's difficult. Um, anyway. Just in on. case you're not familiar with the property, uh, it's basically 4.43 acres. It's currently zoned RB1, use code 104, which is two family, as you probably know. Uh, there's a uh, colonial style home that's built in there in 1974, uh, approximately 2,330 2, square feet of living space, 11 rooms, 5 bedrooms, 3 and a half bathrooms. Uh, the reasons it's uh, used 104, there is a uh, uh, apartment on the lower level, multi-bedroom apartment with a full kitchen and a full bathroom. Uh, basically, the reason for tonight's meeting, give you a little feedback that we've been getting from the market. We've had probably uh, probably a little bit over 25 inquiries. Uh, it's definitely a specialty property. It's not like we're getting a call every day, but we're probably getting two or three inquiries a week, plus or minus. Uh, about 80% have been from developers and even commercial use buyers due to the size of the property. Uh, most of the interest has been for people, uh, developers interested in residential, modest size residential type redevelopment. Uh, there's also been a couple of inquiries, people with restaurants and even equipment storage, like excavators and excavator equipment operators and landscapers. The feedback has primarily, again, been from uh, uh, real, residential real estate developers. Most of them have in mind a commercial, maybe cluster-type development. This is not a specific rendering, but again, that's a sort of idea that developers have been telling us they think would be the best and highest use for this property. Uh, for a garden apartment, it doesn't fit our bylaw, though, does it? No, this, there's only 150 feet of frontage, and it's only 4.4 acres. It's 200 feet for a garden And 10 acres. 10 acres. Right, and 10 acres. So With exceptional circumstances. No. <laughs> I was paying attention. Uh, we haven't been getting that many inquiries from owner occupants who are interested in continuing the, the horse farm use. I think, as, as Val's alluded to, the uh, construction activity and the, the, the noise associated with it has, has really created a little bit of an issue in continuing, continuing that use anyway. Um, obviously, it's long 135, uh, and that's always been a busy road. But with the deep setbacks and the fact that it's uh, previously bounded on two sides by uh, open land, basically. Uh, Gave it at least somewhat of a uh, uh, country look and feel. Yeah. But, you know, with the uh, uh, 
developments over the last few years that's kind of uh, gone away. Um, and as you guys probably know, the uh, commercial subdistrict is going in right next door, and across the street, the village center subdistrict is going in across the street and, and down a few hundred yards. So the character of, of the locus has changed. And for those of you who may not see exactly where it goes, this next page shows how we're kind of in the bullseye of legacy farms. So that's just kind of driving us to come by tonight is that the fact that um, it's really changed the character of the parcel. Val would like to continue the horse farm if it was practical, or even sell it to another horse farm type person. But the legacy farms, that the prospects of that are, are, are not good. And we're hoping that maybe the uh, town uh, would consider Osmond type rezoning the parcel, so maybe a small cluster development or even commercial uses could conceivably go in there at some, some future date if we don't find the uh, horse farm type buyer uh, out there. Roy? Uh, Roy McDowell, Legacy Farms. Just for full disclosure, I met with Valerie a few days ago. Yes, of and course. I, I actually drove by, stopped in to say hello, and uh, we chatted about us considering possibly buying the parcel. Uh, not for commercial purposes, uh, not for horse farm, but possibly nothing more than drip irrigation, additional area, which means we would simply take down the horse farm, take out all the horse corrals, if you will, maybe leave the house and have nothing more than, you wouldn't even know it's there, it's just, it would be a lawn area, be like a big meadow with drip irrigation in the, the grass itself, and Valorant, you have further discussions where we're going to ask to come out and do some work tests. If, in fact, it does work for that purpose, we may very well consider negotiating something with Valorant to purchase it. But I'm hoping to know that in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Isn't the, the west part of your parcel wet? Isn't there a kind of a wetlands on there's the western? There's a very small, there's wetlands in the front, and that's where I'm having my people look at the other side the other end. The only thing we'd require is running two pipes over there, nothing mm -hmm. else. I mean, it would literally be a very small thing. It's nothing but the drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. Think about like irrigation yeah, in your yard. Uh, on that question, Roy, when that commercial parcel gets developed with whomever, driving by there today, I recall a lot of it being wet. So how much of that is going to be cleared to the west? Whatever you see cleared now is all going to be cleared. So what is wooded right now is it's going to stay wooded. wooded, correct? The majority so, of what's wooded now is wetlands. Right. So it's not like this property is going to have your commercial development right up next to it. It's going to be a sizable vegetated buffer. No. no. That's but what I thought. The one thing we thought could make some potential sense is we're going to be doing drip irrigation under parking areas in the retail area. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to do some more drip irrigation over Legacy Farms and the lawns and some of the homes over there. This would be an easier thing to do, to just run two pipes over and do drip irrigation in that area, if in fact it parks. If it doesn't park, it, it doesn't matter. I just want to throw that out yeah. there. So in the next few weeks, if, if something happens, right. great, but not to interfere with what you're doing. Just No, but we had this set up before you just got yeah, by no, yesterday, yeah. the day before. It was, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> it was Saturday, I think. It was today. What is today? Yeah, Monday. 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 Yes. Monday. Yeah, Saturday. It was Saturday, right? Yeah. So from a Thanks, from a practical okay. standpoint, joining it into your commercial doesn't seem to make as much sense because well, be of the commercial. It did stay. You wouldn't need the zone change. It would just be. I, I no, no. I'm talking about if you wanted to, I'll say, creep the commercial distance westward. We couldn't do it because there's a slight wetland in between. So basically, I think they're asking an opinion as to whether they should go forward with that through the either the SAC process or the uh, you know if it's a special town meeting, it's uh, special town meetings in the fall for zoning puts us kind of out of sync because we're normally into the May cycle. Uh, that didn't say that a citizen's petition can't go on there, sure, but exactly. I'm sure the selectmen are, would slap our hands a couple times if we submitted one in the fall. Uh, but that isn't to say that if you're thinking about going ahead that way, uh, we will 
we respond to all citizens' petitions <laughs> by holding public hearings and whatever, but you can't wait to the last minute if that's the process. But at best, they're talking about, I think, a November town meeting. I, but I, well, I'm not the authority on that one. Well, this is just one iron in the fire from Val's sure. point of view. You know, we, uh, if the perfect fire shows up tomorrow and falls, you know, has horses, needs to move in immediately, we'll probably move ahead with vigor <laughs> down that path. Yeah. Yeah. But again, just what people are telling us based on uh, what the market feedback has been, it seems like the, the lion's share of the interest is to redevelop it, some sort of commercial uh, residential application. Yes. Um, we could probably only get one or two houses in the way it is now. It is a two families. I'm thinking it's possible we could get two larger, two homes in there possibly, depending on what the building is. We might be able thought. to get the houses off of Linden Street. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's another that's angle, another yes. Angle. Because you, you have front frontage on, on Linden. Linden. And the other part, I mean, you could get two houses without a zoning change for that. That would be non-commercial I and mean, then residential. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, you've got, you got an A&R problem situation, I think, because that part you've got 450 feet. Yes. Wow. And, okay. and that's RB, so that is 150 50. feet. Mm -hmm. So you got possibly three houses off the back. If Maybe you can do it with wet, I mean, wet. there's a lot yeah. that looks, I don't know. But. Is it really wet back there? It kind no, of shows I mean, that on this trail. The, the rear lot line. Yeah, but. Yeah. So within the buffer area more so than right. I think it's really wet. Right. <coughs> well, I, I put a horse paddock in. I went to a conservation. Yep. Um, a couple of, couple of years ago. Yes. Five years ago. So maybe you can't get much off of that that side. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's another option. Though. It's mm -hmm. another option potentially. Uh, uh, if if you're obviously mm -hmm. going for a zoning change, I would get the your Linden Street neighbors and your other neighbors uh, solidly on board because mm -hmm. they will be the ones that will speak the loudest opinion, and sure. be listened to the most at town meeting and the other, the hearings. Right. <coughs> so how is this not spot zoning? The only way you would say it's not spot zoning is you've got the legacy commercial land right next to it. I, I'll tell you how I feel about okay. this. The legacy project was the result of a multi-year strategic plan that engineered an entire 700 acre piece of land and worked on modeling that put mixes of commercial and housing in, in a controlled area to produce a, a bottom line result for the town. It was master planned as an entire parcel of land. We didn't just willy-nilly pick a spot on East Main Street and say, we'll do that as commercial. Um, every <coughs> area that's residential, the residences have concerns of creep. There were concerns raised at the time of Legacy Farms. Um, East Main Street is a busy street, but for the people who live there, it's home. I live on a busy street, and a lot of people always want to make Hayden Row, oh, it's just Hayden Row. No, it's not Hayden Row, it's our residence. And um, I think it's a very slippery slope to start picking individual parcels and because one person is encountering difficulties with the market, saying that justifies spot zoning. This is not a part of Legacy Farms. This is an individual single property. And then it affects the properties behind. The creep starts up the street. I don't think we ever intended with the Legacy Farms development that East Main Street would creep into a commercial strip. We're very careful about that. In fact, there were five homes on West Main Street that decided that they wanted to be rezoned because of Golden Pond and all the rest, and they couldn't sell their house, and if they zoned it business, you know, that was going to solve their problems. They got those houses rezoned because it is part of a commercial strip, much to the neighbors dismay behind them. Not a single one of those houses has managed to turn over into commercial. Um, the market hasn't been there for it. Um, and it's not just this project, it's what does this say for every project down the road and every house down the road. Um, that is a residential stretch and it always has been. And um, I just think it's, it is a clear case of spot zoning and I feel it's a slippery slope for the town to go down to try to advocate 
individual properties because of market of market forces. Um, I, I would not support this, but that's just my that's just my opinion. Does anyone else want to? I agree go. with Claire. Okay. Okay. I'm uh, I'm on the fence on it. <laughs> I can go both ways. It's home to me, too. Yeah. I mean, I love it there. Mm -hmm. I just can't live there. There's no trails. I can't ride. You know, the, the noise is crazy. Mm -hmm. It has to be. I understand that. Um, it is a stone's throw from, you know, my horses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's the fear that people are going to come over and, and, and knows which they do, by the way. It, it, it's it's almost like a street now. I don't know. Right, exactly. But, but it's home to me, too. Sure. And I wouldn't be trying to sell it if I could stay there, mm -hmm. the way that I am, okay. anyway. Anyone else want to offer anything? I guess I'm kind of, I want to be on the fence type okay. area, but really I'd like to listen to what all your neighbors have to say. Yeah, that's okay. an excellent point. I mean, we haven't really done, at least I haven't, I'm not sure about well, I'll, I'll start to my neighbor. Really. I really only have one neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this There's is not big a whole lot of them. This is big enough that yeah. you're going to yeah. get the Linden Street. Yeah, Linden everybody Linden 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 yeah Peter Mezzet, I know. And, and all those all those wonderful folks there that yeah. have been to a lot of our hearings. Yes. So. Uh, the only thing I'd like to add, I think we're primarily thinking of residential, which uh, not really commercial per se. I mean, we're just thinking of uh, maybe something that fits in with the look and feel, which it's, tends to be like cluster. At least the residential part seems to be yeah. cluster type. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking just looking at the amount of wetlands that I saw on this map, yep. you're not going to be seeing too many houses. No, no, I, uh, I, we're mean, not, like, I don't think we're seeing 20 like, houses. I there. think you're seeing <laughs> more, like in this range type yeah. of thing based on size and stuff. I mean, I, I just don't think you get very far. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Okay. Good luck. Oh, of course. Thank you. It's a process. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Is this, is there, oh, yeah, this is this one. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Thank at you. The, thank you. At this point, we're running only a few minutes behind, but uh, we've got plenty of time to catch up tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, have the continued public hearing for the special permit application for Marathon Solar LLC. Uh, and uh, this is on the solar uh, permit and the stormwater management application. You're going to try Frank again? Okay, we're going we're to try. Uh, we are missing one member who can't vote. Yeah. Matt can't vote tonight, but he's going to watch the tape if it gets continued. And then uh, it depends on whether Fra if Frank. You have reached the voicemail box. Uh, well, it's not looking good for Frank. He somehow the number he gave us, we keep getting voicemail from him. Yeah, no service where he's at. So, so he can vote the next time around after he watches the tape. Okay. So we've got two two folks with the tape, and uh, who else are we missing tonight? Just, no, we're all set. Or we're missing, no, Pat, Pat, Pat's already out. So, yeah, right. One, two, three, four, five, six. We, we have six to, we, we have enough that we could vote tonight if we wanted to, but you'd have to get everyone's vote. Okay. Okay. We want everything spoken. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you and, for having us back. And, nice and so anyway, where we left it the last time, I think there was three key items that that uh, were really outstanding on our outline. Uh, the first one was feedback from the Conservation Commission on the site layout. And they are meeting when Next, when are the you third, with? This coming Monday. They're co meeting this Monday, the third. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could yes. I go ahead and speak to that? Sure. So, since the last uh, planning board hearing, right after that, we went back and met again with conservation. Uh, there was some back and forth on the site plan or the plan, and um, ultimately they gave us very specific direction to move the panels back from the wetland of the northeastern part of the site and the southwestern part of the site. 
uh, to the 75 foot setback, which we agreed to and have done and updated the plans per their specifications. I believe you sat in on the end of that meeting and they said that uh, they were comfortable with with that plan, uh, that that approach uh, for the for the plan, and the, at their next hearing on Monday, that they would then bring, you know consider the new plan, and assuming it met what they told us to do, they would they would vote it. Um, so we we did what they said, and we feel like there is consensus there. Obviously, we can't know for sure until they vote, but uh, we're very confident that. That we did address their concerns, and we're grateful to them for their their flexibility on that. So, thank you for that. So, so from from our standpoint, we don't have a a blessed plan per se. So, I mean, that's that's one one item that, quite frankly, maybe waiting is maybe the better part of valor, and then we can get every all our plans done but correctly because they're they're the ones that set that uh, the second item that was there was feedbacks from the Parks and Rec Commission on screening of the parcel to the west to future town land and mr. chairman if I yeah. could add yeah. to the that discussion as well if you sure well. absolutely, absolutely. Um, since the last meeting uh, we we had occasion to uh, Speak with the chairman of Parks and Rec, and uh, and and uh, also had some conversations with the uh, 26.2 Foundation uh, informally and and, and, and such. Um, we are, uh, and I spoke with the chairman about this, uh, fully committed to enhancing the screening on uh, from the pond all the way southward, uh, including the western bank of that pond and increasing the height of that screening to uh, 15 feet and trying to manage that within the 15 to 20 foot height range. In addition, we uh, proposed an allowance of $15,000 to the Parks and Rec to uh, cover future screening of whatever buildings and or marathon center may be built uh, on the Parks and Rec uh, site and um, we are, you know, actively and, and and, and uh, sincerely planning to work closely with the Parks and Rec Commission, 26.2 Foundation, in concert uh, to be a good partner and, and help uh, them in other ways as well, which you know, isn't necessarily part of the planning board uh, purview, but uh, we, we want to be a participant and a partner in whatever happens on that site and, and help support that. So we want to be a good neighbor, a good partner, we are actively working with both organizations, and uh, we're very confident that that will come together. Um, and just we had very positive feedback from from the folks we spoke to late last week. Mr. Sonnet from Parks and Rec. The uh, I don't know anything about your meeting with the chairman. Parks and Rec had a meeting last Tuesday where we discussed this uh, very much in depth and we came up with two uh, motions and prepared a letter to the uh, planning board which uh, tells our position. Let me just read parts of it to you. It's a letter to Ken Weissman, the chairman. As I understand, it's been distributed to all the members of the planning board. It says the Hawkinson Parks and Recreation Commission met on Tuesday, July 21st. The agenda included a discussion relative to the solar farm proposed for the property of Budding, which is currently part of Legacy Farms, which will be transferred to the town of Hopkinton. Once transferred, the Parks and Rec Commission will manage the development of that parcel. The commissioners debated over the subject. Following the discussion, it was moved and seconded. Uh, and that was uh, that vote was unanimous. The vote not to support was primarily based on what appears to be the non-adherence to the zoning bylaw, specific zoning bylaw, chapter 201, article 31, to solar uh, photovoltaic installations. The commissioners do not believe that the current proposal meets those standards articulated in that bylaw. The commission also requests the town council review all related bylaws relative to solar farm uh, 
placement before the public hearing on this matter is closed. It is the opinion of the Commission that any hearing in regards to this project be delayed until such a review has been completed. In their deliberations, the Commissioners expressed concern that the project would have a negative economic impact on the abutting town property. The land next to the proposed solar farm is designated for parks and rec use. It is the opinion of the Commission that the aesthetics of such an expansive solar farm would significantly lower the property value of the land designated town ownership. This would result in a negative economic impact in both the short and long term. In addition, the 2015 annual Hopkinton Town Meeting voted to determine how to set standards for the proposal, intent, and application of commercial solar photovoltaic installations. That study is critical in determining whether the proposed project complies with the specific zoning bylaw. It is important to make clear that the Parks and Rec Commission vote does not support this specific project as proposed. This was not a vote against solar energy in general. However, it is vital that every step is taken to ensure that the best possible use for the land, soon to be owned by the town of Hopkinton, be achieved, respectively, uh, Parks and Rec Commission. Mr. Chairman, the bottom line here is that uh, there are two things that we think are in play. One is a devaluation of town property because of the solar farm, and two, uh, does it really meet our bylaw? Our bylaw? Therefore, we ask, we're asking for a town uh, council review and the other thing in this. So I would ask that you uh, continue this hearing until those things can be addressed. And as the gentleman said, if he's had a discussion with the uh, Parks and Rec chairman, it certainly hasn't been discussed with its members, and there's no assumption that it would be uh, as warmly endorsed as uh, you say our chairman is. So I guess maybe where I would like to direct both of you guys is one to try to get come together on the screening issues as potentially war you know that's that's the mitigation that this board can enforce. You know, is the fifteen feet the right amount? Is the placement in the right amount, et cetera? Uh, and, and I'll get back to the placement in just a second. Uh, I think the 15 feet were better than the, I'm trying to say the 8 feet that we heard mm -hmm. before. I kind of worry when you're looking up the hill whether 15 feet is the right number or not. Uh, you know, from, from a you know, an absolute screening, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but you also have that study that Mr. McDowell did for his screening, which kind of shows a certain, uh, that was looking at, looking at the screening from the top down and how many feet he needed. And fortunately, his was on the north side, so the height of the trees didn't, didn't bother as much as obviously you've got some constraints on, of trees, but what the Conservation Commission did helps allow longer, taller trees too, because they moved you back away from that area a little bit. Uh, right. You know, that's, I mean, so well. the shadow effect is obviously not nearly as bad as it would have been if they were keeping you in the wet, the wetland area. Uh, so I, number one, I think Parks and Rec needs to look at the screening and looks at the needs to know whether the $15,000 as a contingency of trees needed in the future for screening of, I'll say, high value vistas, I guess, or something like, I don't know how you, you kind of put that. Is that the right number? And if you guys can come together with a what is, whatever the right number is without us, that makes us feel a lot better that the neighbor is in that condition. Board members are kind of supportive of that kind of approach. Uh, that addresses one element, but I think there's other elements that the representative um, Parks and Rec brought up that I think also should be 
okay. vetted. Yep. Right? And I don't know if there's been anything done since then, but uh, I, mean, I thought he brought up a couple good points that I think I'd like to get addressed. Okay. Um, and I think in terms of the coverage, I think it's not only the height, but it's the depth if you're going to look at the coverage. So it's not just a row that goes up 15 feet, but if you look at the other abutters, they have height, but they also have depth to be able to kind of insulate themselves mm -hmm. from what they're looking at. Let's but I think it goes, I'd rather uh, address, or have those issues to address that he brought up before we, before we move forward here. Okay. Uh, now, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I would agree with what Fran just said. Um, as far as not just the height, I think the height going to 15 feet and maintained at 15 to 20 feet or measured 15 to 20 feet range is definitely better than eight, but the depth is equally as important. Um, you know, I know you spoke with the chairman or, or, or were in contact, whether it's, you know, personally by, by phone, by email, um, with the chairman, but he's clearly not conveyed any of that information yet to the rest of uh, Parks and Rec. Um, as the representative of Parks and Rec was unaware of this. I, I, I agree. Um, we, we had a conversation on the phone after this letter came about, and uh, unfortunately we weren't invited or notified about the Parks and Rec Commission meeting, and, uh, and I was made aware that some members of the commission weren't even aware that we had walked the site with the chairman and uh, uh, the representative from the 26.2 foundation and, and showed the photos and we did share the photos of the screen view and the pre-screened view which shows that it would be you know nearly impossible if not impossible to see any of the solar right. panels from this site and propose the additional screening of a future building wherever that may be built on the site at this point our understanding is that's not known it's still a work in progress so mm -hmm. What we thought would be most positive would be to uh, become a partner in, in that project to help them advance their goals and uh, support a, a really important town initiative. So uh, what's, in, what's also I think people have to recognize that we have a short window here where we can get this done. Um, if you want to delay this and indefinitely and, and study uh, your own bylaw and other things that I think are fairly clearly written in, in our opinion and we know what they say, uh, we, we're we just very concerned. There's a construction window that we have to meet this year to, to fall in with our financing and meeting the incentives and it's already sort of carried on a little bit further than we had expected. but. Uh, we, we really need to get to a decision either tonight or by your next meeting at the latest if this project's going to happen. And uh, we want it to happen, and we want to be a good neighbor and a good contributor to, to what's going to happen next door. And so uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, we meet with the right people and, and work with them to get that to happen. And uh, we are absolutely uh, uh, willing to and, and We'd love to meet with uh, that Parks and Rec Commission, and uh, I think the chairman said they might be willing to even schedule a special meeting in between this meeting and your next meeting to discuss. Yeah, uh, the other thing that I did want to add is I, I would also like to hear what um, CONCOM has to, their, their final outcome. I'd like to hear their final outcome before we make any kind of a decision here. So, I mean, I would like to, you know, hold off until that, that does come. And th that should be Monday next week. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let's let, let me go to the details of that screening. I mean, this map shows it pretty well. My question would be, why is this a gap here? When when you're, it appears you look right in at at that bottom set of uh, panels at that point. It, there is there is a, a, a there are actually a lot of trees over here too that. Are in existence. Um, we're, we're happy to extend are, are, that further down. Where, where is the property line there? Uh, our is, lease line is over here. Where's Where's Mr. Message? Uh, it's approximately. It's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's here. I can. It's yeah. Yeah. I mean.
I mean, that's so, kind of where the easement line our, is. Yeah, our lease area, I believe, is and, the stash. And, and, this, and this black line this black is, line is the property, property right. line. It well, kind of cuts at an angle now. It just seems to me like I can look right in yeah. as we soon could. as I cross and look right up into the into the panels. We could absolutely extend that line further yeah. down of, of screen. Or figure out a way to bring it down. Yeah. I, I, that, that was one that just seemed like a even for a layman, that was an obvious gap. And we can add, you know, zigzag the trees to thicken it up as well, uh, similar to what's done further north, right. uh, so that you get a sort of thicker hedgerow, uh, more dense hedgerow. I mean, my, my view, I want to see as little as possible, but if there was a glimpse, I'm not sure I'm, it's that bad, but I don't want to see two acres of it. <coughs> You know, but that's, I don't I just, so, add, I just yeah. want to add that this is a, not a site plan and a special permit, so you can condition it with additional screening being added. It does not have to be a final plan. Right. Well, it, it's a lot easier, though, if, if it's on the plan. And, you know, if we're to the point where we're going to wait for CONCOM, you know, yeah. I want to give you the, you know, build it like this. You know, I mean, because we all understand that. Oh, sure. Yep. And, and if, yep. uh, uh, assuming that uh, Parks and Rec is able to schedule a meeting in between now and your next meeting, we should be able to come to some consensus. Well, we'll hope with that. Now, going back to the second half of Parks and Rec, one is the screening, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and the, whether the amount of the 15,000, I don't, you know, this fifteen thousand. What are we? What are we doing for even trees and bushes? Well, well let me, if I could clarify yeah. something, we're, the, the the shrubs that we're showing are not part of the fifteen thousand. Those are already sure. a project cost. Right. The, the fifteen thousand was an earmark or a, a commitment to Parks and Rec to add additional taller trees sure. in between the future building and the solar, so sure. that they okay. could screen that view from a second floor, let's yep. say, of the Marathon Center or whatever building. Parks and Rec ends up, okay. you know, allowing or building on that parcel. So it's, it's sort of adaptive for them when they get to the point of siting that building, they would have a landscape budget to provide additional screening uh, where, it's, where it's most appropriate. So it's that, that was the idea. You can buy a lot of big trees for, and plant them for $15,000, and that was the thinking. We just we kind of thought, okay, this that's, is a fair that's, budget. That's what I don't have a good handle yeah. on is how many, how much I, how many Big trees? Can I buy for fifteen thousand? You do a good one job. Good one. What? One good one. <laughs> <laughs> can I hear what Roy has to say? Because I know he's been purchasing trees. You, know, you very simply can have uh, the mezzas price on some trees for you. We have we all have, in the industry. We all have wholesale catalogs for various types of trees. You know they're going to be using coniferous trees, so they very easily can get your wholesale price on the trees. That's pretty easy. Tell, tell me kind of what maybe is an action item for the next time. Tell me, tell me, tell me what 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 what, what, what fifteen thousand dollars is 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 that something that I'm you know that I should be really excited about or is it just kind of like right, are we talking one or two or are we talking about a dozen or so? Fifteen thousand in my front yard would be one difference. This is over three four hundred feet. I don't know. I, I just don't have a good feel on... C cemetery just put in three new sugar maples that cost about 1500 to 2000 for the three sugar maples. Okay. So, might not buy you too many. Okay. Anyway. Whatever. I, let, let's hope the commission, Parks and Rec Commission, can, you guys can kind of sort that out. We'll work with them on that. Okay. On that budget and come up with something appropriate. Now, for for the other details of whether it meets the bylaw, uh, I think that's what most of us get paid for. And I say that jokingly. Uh, however, it might be worthwhile if we have a set of terms and conditions that we propose for the next meeting that in the next meeting we have Ray look at those terms and conditions as the Attorney General kind of said in 
her guidance at the time uh, for having town council look at what we might impose. But part of that is, is if the applicant is willing to accept the terms and conditions that are being imposed, you know, then it doesn't go much further than that. I mean, you're off building and you're happy. So, but having town council look at terms and conditions <coughs> might make sense to me whether or not, I think we went through the whole list of the bylaws last time, the setbacks, and we went through all the pieces. There was a couple of subjective ones, such as screening, that we hadn't got there, but everything else I think we thought had determined as a committee that we met the criteria. Uh, I don't know whether, Fran, that helps in your concerns or not. Yeah, I might have to, I'd have to go back to look at Chapter 201, Article 31. That's the one that's specifically referenced. I think that's the screening. I do have it if you, you'd like me to go ahead. I tasted, I tasted the, the uh, standards in the memo. On page uh, three, page three, right? Yeah. Right. So two ten two oh two lists what the plan has to conform to. And, and it's item E that we're still really, we're, we're still talking really about item E, which is screening, and then the utilities underground. We talked a lot about the last time, yep. but everything else was. We have a standard that not detrimental with the neighborhood or the town. Uh, so it's this board that makes those findings, and the town council won't tell you. Right, the town council is not going to tell us that. That's what what we get paid for. Uh, and, and I, I presume the town council reviewed the bylaw when it was brought up at town. Absolutely. Meeting. That, that, that part. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, yeah. with all due respect, uh, the Parks and Rec was very specific asking for a town council analysis of the bylaw because we've heard that the bylaw doesn't hold water with current state law. And we find that uh, something we don't understand. We're pretty, we're very adamant about having town council review it. I don't understand why the reluctance. Why don't well, we take a look at it? Well, first of all, the council has reviewed it when, when, he, when he approved it just a year and a half ago. Or and didn't we get a letter from the attorney general yes. saying that yes. it was? Yes, and the attorney general said that it's good. And However, that and that's in the memo, too. Not to apply it strictly. Basically, it's, it's good. However, that doesn't make sense. The town voted on a bylaw. It's either good or it isn't. We would like to know whether it's any good or not. It's good. It's good. It, what they cautioned us on is don't go crazy on special conditions. <laughs> and don't deny it. Well, that's our request, Mr. Okay. There's a, because there's a uh, solar energy is one of the um, one of the exempt uses in the state statute is only so just like child care, education, agriculture, there are limits on what the board can do in saying no. So can I ask about item G sure. um, as far as the utility connections um, being underground? That's where we stand. Oh. We, uh, there is a draft in your memo that we're, we're, we're okay with. Okay. Uh, well, so, yeah. I want to, you, you're segmenting really nicely to the next segment. <laughs> if you pull out your plan that you submitted, the revised one page, or, one that detailed out that connection. It's to probably 3.3 yeah. or 4.3. C, C43. <laughs> okay, when I looked at this plan, what I saw was across the roadway OHW, which I oh. thought we talked about 
that being underground so that's not overhead wires. Uh, actually, what we I think we missed that. There, you'll you'll note there's a there's a new note uh, just north of that on the yep, plan. Yep. And, um, the note was intended to be consistent with the, the condition that is in uh, Elaine's memo, uh, which is basically that it would go underground unless there was some feasibility Eversource. issue discovered by Eversource, and then it would go yep. back to the planning board. Mm -hmm. It, it looks to me it looks to me like you've got the two pad mount switch gear, which takes the place of all those two rows of poles that mm -hmm. I found really objectionable. Yeah, that's just an oversight of drafting error. We had removed the poles, yeah. right. um, and the intent was to try and reflect that Elaine's condition. Okay, mm -hmm. and 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 I wouldn't mind if if that one dot that's in the middle there represents the guide wire pole. Okay. You, you, if you put something existing pole for guide wire in your drafting of that, I, I just don't want you get thinking that we're looking at going underground or we're not going underground across the road. No, we, we understood the, the the board's comments last time. I think it was really an oversight. I did. I really didn't see the OHW until you mentioned it. But, uh, and and I think it, I think it looks so potentially a lot better the way that it's done, and. You know, it's. Uh, I mean, the guide wire one, one being existing, but the the 15 foot rule doesn't exist on guide wires. They allow whatever vegetation is to. Sure. That's why you probably don't see it well yeah. today. Okay. So, uh, you know. No, we're we're okay with the condition as written. Uh, okay. We can change that and, and change the plan to change the plan a little bit. And Brian, does that take care of your concern yeah. on that one? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the other kind of drafting concern, I'll bring that up now. I still don't see where you've got in your fence detail how you attach the top wire to the poles. So, and this is something. Uh, C51. Yeah. That we actually contacted a fence company again to make sure that it was addressed appropriately and we did relay the comment of um, creating or attaching kind of with brackets at each pole yep. the tension wire yep. and the comments that were given back to us which do make sense to me are one that it's overkill <laughs> you know in terms of if, if the fence is constructed to what this detail shows in terms of the poles being sufficiently embedded and the tensioning being done properly, um, this bracing at points where the corner, where the fence, you know, connects at an angle, um, that that is sufficient and shouldn't have any issues. I know on some of our other projects where we have had fence issues, it's been because, for example, the poles aren't embedded enough or some other con construction issue. In terms of connecting with a bracket at each pole, the issue with that is that it creates multiple points for failure essentially so rather than having one point on either end that are connected appropriately and tensioned appropriately um, you end up at each of the poles if one of those fails you know however many poles you have along that length instead of two potential locations for failure you have 17 or however many poles are along that length so we did take your comment and reach out to a fence company we did update this detail a bit um, based on their input in terms of how it should be constructed, uh, namely this cross brace. Um, we're happy to add a, an additional note or have well, an addition that the fence be. Right, my concern was... Clips, hold that at either pole, yeah, it gets tension. was right and, here. Yeah, I didn't get a good look at this. I was trying to figure out what happened. And, and they have a... You're, you're cl close mm -hmm. to a corner on your right-hand piece there. Yeah. And and so yep. they kind of had something to brace so those two poles, an and it still fell. I think what we've got added is these clamps that actually clamp the fence. No? To, to no, no, not it. Don't. That's what we, That's we were what speaking about what the fence company was saying. One, it's overkill, but two, they're actually concerned about that being oh. more likely to fail. Oh, now, 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 to me, and I'm not the fence guy, if you had a cap that had the hole where the rail used to go and you put the wire through that, then I know it won't fall vertically. In terms of basically stringing the tension wire through the 
poles. Yeah, and that can be done. But it's not a bracket at each. Okay, then pole. it's a, then it's a yeah. It's something to keep it from falling. That's because yeah. that's mm -hmm. obviously what we're finding here. Yeah, we're, we're, this isn't a controversial issue. Right. I know it isn't. I just want to detail so it will right. work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just, I don't have a lot of experience about fences, but I guess this is one that, that goes into my repertoire. So we will we'll update the plan to reflect oh, that. Thank you very much. Detention, yeah. stretching through holes in the holes. Yeah, yeah which is yeah. kind of incorporated in that, but we'll clarify that. I mean, if I noticed the other thing where you're clipping it to the pole line, but you're going to have some pretty long fence lines, too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, you, I can see where every couple hundred feet you might want to do something, but that's up to you. Yep. We I mean, want this fence to stay up. You want it to stay Okay. You know, want to care to... Okay. Uh, yeah, I actually, just as an aside, had about seven conversations with <laughs> internally and then following up with the fence person because I knew this was an issue and really pushed our engineer to make sure that what we're showing is going to function because um, I know it's a concern. And at the end of the day, you want your fence to hold up. Right. Okay. So I think we're stuck still same the same like two issues or whatever the three issues two less issues. I mean we got a little check check the last of the drawings on the last two which won't be taken to hoop, but it's really feedback from Concom and, and Parks and Rec. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Claire. Oh, okay, oh, go ahead. oh please. No, I want to bring up another issue. So okay, go ahead. I was just going to piggyback on something that. Uh, Parks and Rec brought up, and I think you mentioned it as well, about the 26.2 uh, or the Marathon Center. I know that Tim last time showed a couple of drawings he's down here today, but I'd be curious in terms of the type of conversation that you had with him, if there's anything else that you could add to in terms of how they take position on it. Well, that's in such an embryo stage that we have to, you know, we've seen the same things that you have. Yeah. But as far as having a substantive discussion, we haven't done that. Forty-six point two has has a great vision for that. How close it is to being reality, I have no idea. But you know, if it could be combined with some other properties to the north and whatever, we could really turn that, that area into a real asset. For the I agree with you, one hundred percent. 100% so. I, I could I could add to that too. Our, our I mean our primary focus is really to make sure that Parks and Rec is comfortable with what we're doing and has adequate screening A and that we also support uh, in in a uh, will there'll be a contribution toward what they're doing uh, and in addition to that we want we do want to be a partner in uh, what. 26.2 is doing the Marathon Center, so we are we are in conversations with them. I think that's outside the purview of, of yes. this group and outside the purview of Parks and Rec per se, but there is some interrelationship there that we're aware of, and we're just trying to navigate that, that a little bit to make sure we uh, uh, satisfy what's going to happen on that parcel of land and, and, and that Whatever we contribute toward that is used the way that the Parks and Rec wants and that uh, is best, most beneficial to the town. But that's in addition to just sort of screening our site under the zoning, which we fully intend to do. This is sort of an additional, uh, our, our partnership and contribution to, to the town and its betterment and the Parks and Rec department as well. So. But we're, we're committed to that. Uh, we we want to be here. We're long term. We want to be a good neighbor, and we want to work with Parks and Rec. So that's our commitment. Other concerns, questions from members of the board, Claire. Yeah, um, I reviewed the tape from last session, and uh, as as I understood it, at that point the board was looking at the decommissioning agreement but not a performance bond largely because of the difficulties of having to go to the general fund and then appropriate it. Is, is that correct with the board? Yes. That's what like it? Yeah. Okay, I, I want to state I am very uncomfortable with the town not having 
a performance bond in hand that they can access, even if the mechanism is cumbersome. Um, if we want to have a decommissioning agreement as well, that's fine. But um, a lot can happen in 20 years or less. Uh, and I don't want to see us get into a situation where agreement be done, the thing is sitting there, it's deteriorating, it's gone dead, the company's long gone, uh, the solar, which was the great new thing now, is now a thing of the past, and we've got these rusting things sitting out there, and we can't get the company because they're gone to remove them at a certain point. Um, you know, I know we all have great, great plans for solar, but, you know, I've seen so many projects where we couldn't get in touch with the developer, Elaine or whoever is sending him letters for nine, ten months, we get no answer. Um, you know, I'll bet you my beta recorder and a case of floppy disks that 20 years from now we might want to get rid of this thing. And I am not comfortable with the town not having access to funds so that we can take it out. I don't want to be stuck holding the bag. If I could address that, I appreciate your comment very much. Um, we, it's not that there's no, no commitment to remove it. We have a legally binding lease with the landowner that has us putting a, a solid uh, surety bond to, in the, you know, to the landowner. And 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 if if we don't remove, if that project is over and we don't remove the equipment, the landowner has direct access to those funds to, to remove it. And he has no interest in you know keeping it, if, if he has no interest in keeping it operating. I, I understand yeah. there are all these great mechanisms put in place. This party will do it, and that party will do it. And 20 years from now, suppose, I, I don't wish you any harm, but suppose your company is gone, and the landowner has moved along, and it's held by I don't know who, and we've got these different parties. The town is saying, get rid of these things, get rid of these things, and they don't do anything. And at a certain point, we're stuck looking at this thing. We can't legally go in and take it because it's under somebody else's control who we can't contact. They live in Florida or whatever. I've seen this so many times with this board with different developments where we had a hard time raising the developer to get some action. It goes on for weeks and months and years. and. If the whole agreement works as it's supposed to, that's great. That's what we want. We don't want to have to do this. But if it doesn't, the best laid plans of mice and men, I want our town protected so that we don't get stuck holding the bag. We have access to some kind of funds that if we have to do it, we can go in and do it. And it may be cumbersome, but um, I personally will not agree with this unless the town is protected by funds that we can access to do it ourselves if worse comes to worse. Uh, maybe, Elaine, that's one of the, particularly the conditions that Ray need, could opine on. I mean, that, you know, because that, that, we do have it written as a condition. Obviously, Claire feels that it might not be strong enough, but maybe Ray can help us in, in that over the, over the, yeah, not, not in agreement on bonds. It says right in the, you know, yeah, I, we're kind of ham, hamstrung on a lot of this. Our hands are tied. The state has said you have to approve these things, blah, 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 anywhere, anytime. One of the things it does allow us is to collect a performance bond. We are allowed to do that. So I just think we should protect ourselves to the fullest extent possible. If we don't use it, then that's okay. great. Let's, let's have Ray opine on all the conditions, particularly that one. Okay. Other questions, comments? Anyone else? Members? Public? Okay. We have a bunch of action items. What time's available on the 10th? Yeah. Okay. We have a couple of items so we could do it at 7:30. Do, do you expect to have a quorum at that meeting? Do you know? Uh. Said that I, said I won't be here. You won't be here. Oh, great. We'll have Kobe take. <laughs> okay. Um. I think I think it's clear where we're 
which way we're headed and what we have to do. Uh, there's no questions, I don't think, on the stormwater open at this point. We just want to make sure that we're not losing this opportunity not to, to do everything else. The consultant said that everything was fine with that. Okay, so I guess we're ready for a motion to continue the public hearing on both of these uh, permits to uh, 7.30 on August 10th, 2015. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And we'll get... An extension of time to the stormwater management permit to final decision. At the end of that week, August 14th. Okay. And, and the motion would be to... Is that to request or to... Actually, if you wanted to accept the proposal the following, I'll be back. What? I'm just looking at my vacation schedule. So if you grant an extension of time to file a decision to August 21st. August 21st? And, and is that just a motion from us? Yes. A motion to extend the time to August 21st. Move and second. And seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And what else? Is there anything else we need to do? <laughs> okay. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you on the time. Okay. Thanks for your time. We do appreciate your comments. Okay, I think next up on the gist is uh, Mr. Pine, Christian Estates. I think we've got two or three minor things to do here. The first one is to set a performance guarantee amount for the remaining work, and we heard from our engineer today, I think, of $54,421. Is that, are you aware of all of what's been going on the rest of the day? Um, well, last week, Joe Markledown brought me his uh, version of yep. items left to be done and a value beside them. That time, including a 20% contingency, he had $49,621. I did not see what uh, Luckner did. The only change is to the amount for the, um, yeah. the detention fund, where Mark Van had $3,000, uh, Luckner pumped that up to $7,000. That's the only change. Okay. Um, the issue, and I, I uh, had reached out to Luckner on Friday, uh, just left a message on his phone because I didn't get him and asked if it was possible for him to come by today because I expected to accomplish uh, several of these items, which in fact I did. Uh, the side the site grading and the side slope is completed. Uh, the detention bonds uh, are completed. The loom and seating is completed except for one short strip. Uh, one of three check dams is completed. Uh, the stone trench is completed. Uh, the driveway is paved by the tennis court. Um, it needs an as-built plan, iron pins, legal description. So uh, apparently he didn't see all of that, but it, it, it is completed. I, I took some pictures tonight for, uh, to see if they'd be of, of any help, but... Uh, uh, Jim, I think we can set what he recommends tonight, and in the next meeting we can reduce everything that he says that's done. I mean, you know, typically it's been, I think, the policy of the board just to, to look at the, ins get the inspector's input before we go further. But we can reduce it right away or wait. Okay. I mean, that's fine, but what, what did his report show today? I mean, just the one change. So he had taken Mark Grant's list and circled the uh, attention fund and then crossed out the number and put in the 7,000. That was it. He tried to send a report with photographs, but I couldn't open it. He had an issue on his end. All right. I, one of my issues is because I did this as an individual, not a company. I, I understand. Bonding is not really possible, and it's something I've been just working at. But I'm, 
uh, it's necessary that I get at least one of the three lots, um, you know, released uh, because they're anxious to get building. And, uh, which which lot do you need to get released? Um, Well, it's the last one, the biggest one. I think it's 3C is the way they've identified it. It's a, it's a, uh, no, I'm sorry, 2C. It's about an 11-acre lot. It's the, the one that goes at the very end. this lot and, and go with the amount, can we also make it to be automatically reduced if, the in, if our, our consulting engineer Luck, Luckner comes out and looks at it and knocks them off? which then will allow you to, all those that you said you got done, as long as he says it, will reduce it automatically. How about that? To a certain point, you don't want to get over to zero without coming back to the board. No, but all the items that, yeah. But the review at your next meeting to see what the total is. So entertain a motion to uh, set the Release at 54 240 421. 421, subject to review of line items by the inspecting engineer, which could reduce that amount accordingly. accordingly. Yeah. Automatic reduction. Yep. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, then the next one would be to vote to release the lots pending receipt of whatever is left on the performance bond. And this would be for lot 2C. Just the one lot? You want one lot or you want two lots? Uh, you want them all? We no. Can do it. No? <coughs> As you know, oh, it's, you a, start it's, saying it's, taxes it's a three. No, it's a three lot subdivision. Yeah. I have two family members that would like to get underway. One a little okay. quicker than the other. Okay. Uh, and, and, and even that. Okay. This isn't. A, okay. So the request is for lot two C. And this is to what? Sign the lot release. You can vote. Uh, looking for a motion to sign the lot release for two C. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, we're going to sign that. I think you're going to pass that around? Yep, and we'll pass it around. Then I'll authorize it to pick it up tomorrow. Well, or actually pick it up once we receive the funds. Once you receive the funds. We'll have it all in the office. It could be a charity company. Get, you've got a lot of stuff that, you know, get your engineer out there to make it down to a small number. i got to get Luckner out here. Yeah. It's done. No, yeah. I, I understand. I mean, just, you know, I know he was there today, but I don't know how you can miss a paved road. I, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you. Okay, I think we're now at Hayden Woods. Davenport Village. How you doing? Hi. So, we're up here for signage and uh, performance bond. Okay. Now, for the performance bond, 
the number I got with the 20% that we're supposed to do there would be 284,880, which is beta's list. Latest. Beta had had 15% uh, in our policy right. as 20%. Yep. So yep. provided my calculator did the math correctly, it's 284,888. So if you're... Now, do you also vote to release the lost pen in that receipt? No lots, it's kind of a name, so. Yeah, right, okay, so we don't have okay, so it's just, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, the board will, will send a letter to the building inspector once the funds are received saying it's okay. Okay. Okay, so basically uh, looking for a motion to set the performance guarantee amount at 284880. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for the discussion, seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, so that's the easy one. Now we're talking time. <laughs> okay. Why don't you uh, present your request? Um, do you have those pictures? Uh, I don't have okay. them electronically. Uh, okay. um, uh, I think we had them. We, have, yes. we yeah. have pictures right oh, okay. here. So you have we have pictures. I guess. What would you like to discuss first, the temporary Which, sign or the sign? Let's go with the temporary sign. That's the easier one, I guess. Okay. Elaine, where are we on a temporary sign? It's totally at your discretion. Because? Because the garden department by list says all signs are subject to planning board. So, so basically the fact that it is bigger than a real estate sign that would be in an RV district does not matter. Well, it's something that you might want to think about, but it is typical for marketing signs for developments to be larger than, than a regular realtor sign for a home for sale. Did anyone have comments on that? Has anyone drove by and found it exceptionally ugly or not? I thought it kind of looked kind of nice. <laughs> all right. It's all right. No issues. Same here. I don't have any issues with the sign. Okay, temporary sign. This looks like we're going to have a consensus that we'll, when we vote signs, we'll, that one that one works. Okay, take the easy Thank ones you. first. Thank now, what about the sign you didn't ask for for the financing of the property? Financing. Oh, oh, okay. Um, is that something you need? Well, they'd like to have it there. But If that sign, it, does that meet our sign bylaw for the bylaws of somebody working on a site? We didn't measure it, but it's one of the smaller If it, if what, is, what do you, it's six square feet? Or what, yeah, six square yeah feet. I would say that's if, probably right in the realm of that. If, if it meets, if it meets the normal sign bylaw for somebody doing construction work on a site, I, I don't see where we would single that out. I mean, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah. And, and that that would be more under the sign bylaw as opposed to something we're doing here tonight. Is that? Well, everything is. I guess everything is? Subject to your Okay. So we, okay, so we guess we got to do that one too. Okay, now let's go to the ones that carved in stone. <laughs> First of all, was the was the rock wall on the original plan? The yes. little wings. Yes. yes. So we had, we were supposed to get the wings. Yes. So the walls are constructed. And we have that stake. We have that stake by Mark went in for the exact okay, so length the and so forth. Yeah. Nice wall. The question. Beautiful. Is, uh, go. Wait. Yes. <laughs> uh, the question is the, the name versus the street name versus, Wayne, can you kind of go through some of our past deliberations on this for the new board members? Well, I guess the long-standing concern is twofold, that development names are not often the street name, and then when people move in, they might identify with the development name, so when they call for emergency services, they're saying, I live in Davenport, and 
emergency, first of all, won't know where Jack Ward is because the street name is Buckner Street. So that, I think that's the first concern, that, so that the town has always been concerned about different names from that perspective. Um, the other perspective, the board hasn't wanted um, developments like this to turn into private enclaves. I mean, it's a condominium project, so it's a little bit like that, but in Legacy Farms, the town was pretty clear, for example, that it wanted to, to be integrated into the town and not to be a separate enclave. Um, you know, the board has never wanted gated communities and those kinds of things. Um, so try to make it part of the town and less like a private enclave. It's always been the past concern when it comes to things like that. In this case, you know, it has Davenport at the wall, but it doesn't mean anything. I guess the street name is Buckland Street. The development name is named Woods, although it's been renamed, but it'll, that name will never appear anywhere. And when, for example, someone comes to Town Hall to say, I'd like to see the plans for Davenport Village, no one will be able to find them. Well, say, we've encountered that a few times over the years. With Toll Brothers, for example, we named their subdivision is totally different than the subdivision plan. So people coming in to look for that, we happen to know what the name is to look for. But well, not that it matters to you, but we have been marketing it as <coughs> Davenport Village at Hayden Woods. So, I mean, well, there's nothing to say that you can't continue to market it as yeah, Davenport right, Village. Right. I think that's what's in your marketing right. sign. But um, there's been a long standing policy, and as Elaine just explained, there's some very good reasons for it. And I do understand that you took over the, the development from the Hayden Woods and got its approval. So you weren't, you know, you know, fairness, you weren't party to the right. discussions. And sure. it was probably an honest mistake. Uh, but having said that, um, you know, we, we run the risk of do what you want and ask questions later once it's already done. You know, we'll just let it go. Um, and then the next one comes along, the next one we, we have for a long time. Um, consistently maintained that developments should not be named. And we have here a 940 unit uh, housing development. Actually, it's now more than 940, over a thousand at Legacy, that are willing to not have names for their their development. Um, and, and you know, I just I just feel that we should, uh, we should uphold what we've been upholding. There are good reasons for it. And um, I, I think it should come out. I think if you're going to leave, if you're going to leave a sign in there, it should say Buckland. It should be the name of the street. Otherwise, it should not be yeah, a name. Chuck, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm a little confused because when we were asked to come in with names for the development, we came in with a written request and said Davenport Village, named after Mary Davenport, the wife of the former governor of Massachusetts, and we came in with Buckland Lane as the street name. We came in and presented those to this board. And while I agree and I understand the logic of what's being said, uh, Springwood, Circa 1700, Legacy Farms, there are developments all over town that have developed names. So uh, it's you, you can say what you want, but people do identify themselves as coming from a particular development. For fire protection services, there's going to be a street sign on there that says Buckland Lane. So I, I, I respectfully would submit that we were in front of you in writing with this in both names when these gentlemen took over Aiden Woods and we said we were going to rename this and we gave the history as to how we were going to do that. So it's a little confusing to me right now as to uh, how this is coming to, coming into play. Well, Obviously, it's at the discretion of the board. And we'll do but, what at the, it says. but at the same time, we didn't approve Stonewall that had a, a street name in it or a name in it either at the same time either. You didn't. You didn't ask us about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that always raises red flags. Both design review saw this, and this board. When we ask about signage, and you know, I can be pretty darn certain that if it had been said we're going to name it Davenport and it's going to be in the stone wall, that would have been a point of discussion, and it wasn't because yeah. it was never it was never brought up. And you know, legacy people have assured us that once the development is built out, all those marketing signs are going to come down. And what's going to be up there are the street signs. It's not going to have an entity that says Legacy Farms. And um, you know, this this was not approved. Where, where are people? Can we seek approval? I mean, well, it's kind of what you are at this point. Well, I don't know if you have to have a formal submission of 
Well, I would say that this is more in the administrative mode, I think, as opposed to having to have a public hearing on it. But where, where, where do people, I, the real question is, does the etched in stone come out of the stone or not? I mean, that's what we're talking about. I, I know where Claire's at. And the next guy is going to come and just do it. You're just going to do it. The easiest thing in this town is just do it and ask questions later, and the board will let it go. Because well, that wasn't our intent. No, but that's that's the way it will it will go further down. It, it'll it'll yeah. be a pressure. I put subdivisions in many towns, and we do that all the time. That's Who wants to? I wouldn't have an objection with the street name, but I think it does add to confusion. Having a development name and a separate sign on the street name, and I have problems. Okay, so there's. I don't have the history that other members of the board have with this issue, but I can't say that it's one of the things that trouble me the most. So I. I made my comment. I mean, I, like I said, you know, either I would like to either see it be changed to the name of the street, Buckland, or or be removed, just for clarity's point. Is there precedent here? Right, because I know that Claire brought up legacy, but to, to Chuck's point, there are a number of and and a lot of those were the early '90s yeah. developments, and at that point some of the problems starting to get there and then I think the board now I don't go back quite that far well I go back 15 years yeah. and we have not been permitting developments to have permanent names because we started to have Ravenwood and sure. some others and sure. so we don't like that and we have been consistent about denying development names on permanent signage yeah. years. I remember one of my younger kids came in and said well the people in that neighborhood don't play with us. <laughs> <laughs> what about the fact that it's a private way, it's not a public way? It's a, it's a, they're part of Hopkinton. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think Claire's points are salient. I mean, I know there's some history here and we pointed out, but I think over the past 15 years, if we haven't been doing it, I would be consistent with that process. Matt, do you? Uh, I mean, I don't take uh, that much exception with it, to be honest with you. I mean, it doesn't say Davenport Village, it just says Davenport. So, to me, you know, I, I guess I'm just not as picky about that. Um, so See, to me, the fact that's that where the confusion is, because Davenport, somebody could think that that's Davenport Road, Davenport Lane, Davenport whatever. Yeah. That's where the confusion is, if it said Davenport Village. Then you're naming the development. Yeah, clearly, you know, emergency nine one one. You know, they uh, always ask for the address. Somebody's going to give. It, you know, if it's a landline, they already know where they're calling from. So it's to me, you know, it, I get what you're saying. It, it sort of, you know, doesn't line up with what we would ideally want. But I think the E nine one one thing is, you know, a little uh, misstated. I think I'm hearing a consensus not to approve the etched in stone. I think that's kind Is that of the way stone? I What are you saying? <laughs> two or not well, two? Well, let's, uh, Claire, since you're, I think, on the majority side, why don't you propose a motion about the, uh, the etched stone? Okay, I, I move that the Davenport signage be removed. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Move the second to further discussion. We've talked about enough. What, what if what if he would want to make it say Buckland? That's my he next. May, he may not. My next you? question. Okay. If you're it denying would, this, it would have to say Street. Lane. Uh, the lane. development is not named Buckland. Buckland. Street. Buckland Lane. Whatever it's called. I mean, you couldn't just say Buckland. No. Buckland Lane. You know, but if you wanted to use it as a street sign, I guess you could. Well, we want to take a vote on this one. We have a we, well, we have a motion in front of us. So let's 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 take a motion, well, and then then we'll, we'll have we another. We'll we'll have another. We, we think that it adds to the wall having signage in it. So okay, we'd like to. Okay. Well, I mean, if you decided to put Buckland 
street instead. Or lane. Wait, whatever it is, rather than just park one. You'd have to take the Davenport thing out anyway. Would you be smoothing it out and then recarving it? Oh, we'd have to replace it. So if you have to yeah, replace have to, it, then it's it going away anyway. Letting them say Buckland doesn't help them any. Plus, if it said Buckland, I think you would still need a regular. You'd still need a regular street sign. Yes, because we're, we're not. We're not. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're not looking to right, no. put that in, in, so, to replace the street sign. You know, we just think it adds to it rather than just a plain stone wall. Like, I think it adds a little color to it. It's a little class to it. But it, to, to vote on it, it yeah. seems that some people aren't against it. What, what does well, the vote well, have well, to well, be? Well, majority? Yeah, we just take this a vote on the removal. We, we, have yeah. a, we have a vote, motion in front of us for the removal. Move and second. Yeah. All those in favor of removing the sign say aye. 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 So put, put, put one's hands up, I guess. One, two, three. Okay. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Two nays. Anyone abstain? I guess not. So, I guess that's motion up. passed. Now, if you would like us to go approve Buckland Lane, we'd be happy to make that motion. It's up to you. Or now, we would would we have to put Buckland Lane in each one, or could we go Buckland Lane? <laughs> <laughs> Just asking. That would be weird. Well. I think that would be weird. Yeah, it would be very no. weird. I mean, okay. So it'd be the, the motion, uh, entertain a motion to replace the writing with Buckland Lane, Davenport. So move. If, if wished. If, if he yeah, wished. It's, it's, it's up to they you. They might want to rethink this. Yeah, right. Okay. So um, move. Point, point of clarification, yeah. Mr. Chairman, it says here in the, in the, on page 10, it says Buckland Street. It does say Buckland Street on page 10. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Buckland Lane. Yeah, yeah, it's Buckland Lane. Oh, okay. okay. That's Buckland. We, have a, we also have a Buckland Street. Uh, oh, we do. Well, it doesn't exist, but it's on all the maps. Oh, jeez. That's confusing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So the motion, I think, was moved and seconded, right? She didn't hear a second. I'll second. Okay. It's the same size. Same, same, same size. Same size sign. Same size. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'd want to just pop yes. that out, and yep. although it's going to be a lot more work involved. Yeah. A lot of fun. Okay. Uh, so moved and seconded uh, for for the sign change. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The motion passes. Now we need a motion to approve the temporary marketing sign, which will be come, which will come down when uh, all the units are sold. The last unit is sold. Last. Temporary till the last unit is sold. So motion for the temporary sign and for the financing and any financing. financing construction type signs will meet the sign bylaw. So moved. Moved. Second. Seconded. For the discussion, seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay, and we already did the we did the money, right? Yes. For our yep. yes. So we're all set. Well, good. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I understand you're doing pretty well in Solomon, huh? Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's good. Did you say surprising? It's, it's surprising how fast. Oh, that's good. Just want to remind you, we still an affordable unit is still required there. So you're working on that, right? That's going to be fine. <laughs> okay. I think we're now here for the center of the arts. Yes. Chuck, come on down again. Danny's here too. Okay. And Dennis, thank you for waiting patiently. We've been oh, taking a while. And <laughs> okay, so now we're on the center of the arts, and basically there are some minor revisions and to the parking layout. And the first decision the board needs to make is we agree this is an administrative change because they are relatively minor. And if something happens that changes that during the presentation, then we will start the process differently. But uh, let's keep that in kind of in mind that we can maybe go that way. Okay, so Dan, do you want to lay this out? 
and just take them, let's, let's just take them one at a time and let's discuss them one at a time and we'll just get right through it. All right. So we've got nine new parking spots. First yep. Uh, two of those parking spots are over in the main parking area in front of the, the building itself. Where the silo used to be. Huh? Exactly. We used to have, uh, the silo used to stick out here, and we had a kind of a bigger island there. Uh, the silo went away, um, so we just brought the parking down. You can kind of see where the, that little dash line is, where the curve cut used to be. So we picked up uh, some spaces there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, other, uh, the other seven are over in the kind of the auxiliary parking spot now. Um, they're being used as temporary parking spots now. Um, so we thought it would be good just to make them into permanent parking spots because it's, it's become a popular place from what I understand. And if I remember from your submittal, you have some landscaping that goes out in front, oh, a bunch of yes. bushes of some sort. Yep. There was a lot of, we angst a little bit about whether parking there was going to bother the people across the street, but they're doing it now. Well, we We've been doing it anything. all during construction because we basically had to fence off this whole area so that no one could have, so the only parking we've had has been right here. And it's worked out really well. We uh, did we did update the landscaping plan and did enhance that plantings there with some more uh, screening because we were thinking the same thing the headlights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they, if there was a night event mm -hmm. uh, so we put some something there that would screen it pretty much year round. Is the big mm -hmm. tree still staying? Maple tree. This one on the corner here by yeah, the, right by we're, the we're trying hard to keep that. It's 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 in a little bit of tough shape, but we're having an arborist look at it. And we have no intention of taking it down. The thing that worry, kind of bothers me about those parking spaces along Hayden. I understand the other two over on the side, but uh, you know, again, the people across the street. This is a residential neighborhood. Um, we've even, you know, in our town bylaws, tried to. Uh, advise against parking lots between the building and the street because of what it does to the streetscape and I understand they've been using it temporarily but everybody understands construction and temporary it's another thing as a permanent fixture and for these homes these are homes these are people's residences and now they're going to look at a bunch of cars there. I, I looked at all the back plans and there was all this nice landscaping and the parking got kept over to the side. And one of the things that's unique about this site is that whereas so many places in town are parking poor, um, <laughs> this building is parking rich. We have got so much access to shared parking with the entire high school parking lot around it. Um, it, it it's not like the site needs to squeeze out extra parking places. There's plenty of overflow parking. Um, I, I'm just sorry to see that happen to the neighbors on, on a permanent basis on the site that I don't think really, really needs it right on the street. It, it makes a big difference on the way it looks from the street when you've got a parking lot right up. The overflow so. parking is really just for special events. We can't use that school parking lot on sure. a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, most of that parking lot is empty. No, no, no. School hours. No, well, during the day, just I would disagree that we're parking rich. All right, and and and, and while the, the the legal agreement we have with the schools, the schools have priority, obviously, as they should. All right, but in the evenings and the nights, uh, excuse me, evenings and weekends, we have the opportunity to coordinate with a single point of contact in the school to say we have a play going on here, we have a concert, we have this. They give us the okay. We do it 60 days in advance, everything's, and it works out well. During the day, we have 80 kids going to camp right now at that barn. This place is, is, is hopping and it's not even at full throttle yet. We have 45 parking spots, including the handicapped parking spots out here. We need these parking spots to run this facility. We believe firmly 
that we can landscape this so that there will not be any headlights penetrating to the streetscape. We believe that's not a difficult issue to do with the berm and with some landscaping. This can be covered. And we've been there over a year now, and we haven't had a single complaint but from anyone, without, without any shrubbery, that, without any your, landscaping. Your peak hours, what are your peak use hours? Your peak use hours are after school hours. Your, your, what you're not understanding is that we're running all day in here. Uh -huh. All right, all right. so we're going to have, these, these parking spaces are going to be taken. We're running, we're, the, the, I mean, I don't want to get into the programming about what we're doing, but non-children stuff, adult stuff, is going on in here all day. And it's only going to grow because we're becoming a regional center for the arts. So to, to limit this, I think, would be foolhardy. I, I, would, I would just like to ask, I know we're treating this as a minor thing, but um, the abutters were involved in, involved in the original site plan because of neighborhood issues. Um, and I would feel that the people that live across the street should be aware of this plan change because what was promised to them were not um, six or seven sets of headlights and you know we may see it as minor but it, I bet they wouldn't see it as minor I, I think I think the abutters should should know I don't think it's fair to the neighbors to change the site plan that affects the neighborhood without them knowing about it and if they're good with it then fine In relation to that, what are you doing about lighting that for the nighttime events? Those are new parking spaces that weren't there, so you have to light them at night. Well, there, there was a light pole on we, the garage. We, have, we got a light pole that kind of runs that, that kind of that area. But it wasn't going to shine out toward no. Hayden Row. No, it wasn't going to shine out toward Hayden. But with parking spaces there now, you're going to need to light that that area. I don't, light think, I don't think we need to light it any more than it is. Okay. Light, yeah. Is there, a, is there a light on this corner? There's mm. got to be, right? There's, there's a there's kind of light along here. There's one here. Yeah. And there, there, there's probably there some street lighting on Hayden yeah. Row as well. Uh, but I don't know for sure. But we, we're not really proposing any more lighting. Okay. Okay, let's let's see where we are in the, the seven spots. People think that's a big issue or a little issue? I don't think it's a big issue, but I think to Claire's point, it, you would at least want to let the abutters know that this was going to be a permanent change. And if they don't have any issue with it. Okay, so I think we're coming back to, we're coming back to that to be a, a minor change and we need to do some notification. But I think before we can approve it, we need to make sure that the abutters are aware and yeah, they're okay. That, that's the notification. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did just look up the, the bush that's proposed. It's an evergreen shrub, three to four feet tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a chunk of point. I think you can do mm -hmm. some things uh, to mitigate any concern, right? Yeah. Yeah. Courtesy. Yeah. Okay. Well, ones. we should do it. Okay. Yeah. You know? Okay. Let's, let, let's go through the rest of these. I think the issue for most of us is just to make sure the screening is adequate. Just you know, if, if the bushes aren't there, the rock wall looks nice, you know, as long as somebody didn't put a sign in it. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I think, yeah, the other issue was the dumpster was kind of right in the, the middle of things here now. Uh, there's an existing concrete pad over here, we just kind of put over there and put the same type of uh, screening around and fencing around it. And then this would become green space there. That's the issue with that. And yeah, it looks like you can get to the dumpster easy. Uh, looks like yeah, work actually easy to truck. Yeah. That works truck good. Access, yeah. Okay. Anyone have a problem with that? No. Nobody has any problem with the silo, or the sidewalk really layout because silo's not there. So that yeah. kind of no. seems to work. Planning of additional landscaping. Other than that, I think. I think at this point, we've kind of said we've got to. Notify the people across the street. Is, is that adequate to hit these people over here and maybe the one or two people at, at each side of it? I mean, well, these I spaces mean, are already here, right? Yeah, yeah. These people, there's I think three houses here. 
with those ones there because there's nobody here. He's got yeah. a fence. Yeah, you just send the letter there? Yeah. Okay, and then we can schedule this next Whatever next meeting. Next meeting okay. we'll, and we'll, we'll get a, Elaine will figure out a time certain for that. Sounds good. And so I think. We don't forget to build the notification plan. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like you're coming right along here on the project. It's coming. It's coming. Labor of love. Okay. Okay. We got a letter from Dennis Katz from Hopkinton Drug. Case. Case. I'm sorry. Anyway, it's too German for me. I think it's Polish, I'm not sure. Is it really? Oh, okay. Could be Ukrainian. Okay. Uh, from Dennis, and quite frankly, a lot of what you point out, I personally agree with your 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 items that you pointed out. We drafted a re response letter to you. Do we have another copy of that? Yeah, give him a. Thank you. And and we're going to kind of maybe go through discussing the response, but. Uh, I think a lot of what Dennis pointed out is that there are parking issues in downtown, uh, a lot of which we know is coming, and a lot of it is due to some success in having some more business coming to downtown, which I think is the goal for everyone. Uh, but. A lot of the businesses in downtown don't have the parking that you happen to have. You're, you know, you're, you're, you've got a bunch, and I remember from when we did the surveys, it was wide open when we did the surveys bunch. Now that you've expanded the compounding business, et cetera, I, I just noticed you've got more, you park, you, there's more people, more employees, and you fill up that lot that, I mean, you could have. <laughs> shot a cannon through 10 years ago or whenever we did it five years ago something something in you know some of that range which which is good I mean but I think you know the points that he makes about it's getting filled up and you know if we're going to be one of the points he brings out of the library and you know I mean we're getting to the point where the half parking rule might not make sense anymore and the need for off street you know big blue peas is getting to be if we're going to be successful downtown you know we've got we're going to need to have some off street parking but that's what I tried to help Elaine get through in a letter and uh, You know, I think we're all looking to see that the downtown is invigorated and vibrant and walkable and all those good things. And yeah, but Dennis, yeah, from, from, uh, I don't know this officially, but from what I understand, there's going to be uh, the uh, intersection going to be widened out, and that there's going to be uh, space taken on both sides of the street from the parking from the uh, uh, sidewalks. I'm not sure how much from the plan, and I'm trying to remember back because we haven't seen the plan in the last couple of years from the, those hearings. I know some of the lanes get a little bit narrower, but we also have to create bike lanes of five feet. And I think maybe the curves get out of, we don't lose much of the parking, or the, no, we lose a lot of parking spots from when I remember the plan. I don't think we lose significant amount of the sidewalk width, per se. That, that, that's what I was, I was concerned about, how much, how much we're going to lose on the sidewalks because the people need to walk uh, because there's no parking spots. They have to walk for the distances. Right. Where are they going to walk? Right. Well, obviously, when you're rebuilding a downtown, and you got all these buildings that are where they are, and those are kind of givens. You know, it's it's not where 
you're not starting off with a, a, a blank sheet of paper, but this and, and this, you know, state plan, which we're in the 2019 budget cycle for construction with the state, and we, we maintain that portion. From what I understand, they have to do a 25% design review within the next year. And the money that we got as part of the mass work grant for Legacy Farms Road North has to be expended, I think, by the end of this year or something? In November, I think. So the state is going to be coming in to advance the plans for this whole project. And uh, my concern, because I think the project needs to go forward, is that everyone is not going to be happy with the plan because all the parking spots are going to be out there. So the plan would work if you had the off-street parking because you know you need it. For example, I, I think the parking lot in front or spot in front of Vinnie's and uh, the Yogurt Beach, one of the one or two that they actually have, they go away when you start putting two lanes of traffic going through the intersection plus a left turn lane. Uh, and so, and then the other part of this plan when the state is requiring the uh, relay out of parking. All the parking spaces have to be the standard length of what 18 feet or whatever, whatever the state standard is. So you can't you can't cheat like we we're currently doing now. So that loses a few, and you can't have state ones right near the crosswalks. And you know by the time you kind of put it all together, we lose a lot of spots. And I think it's incumbent upon this for the success of not only this project but for our downtown is to get off street parking and that I think was the essence of what your letter is and I'm going to say I agree with that aspect uh, we tr I tried to, to outline something and Elaine really worked hard to flesh it out uh, to try to explain how we got there a little bit and kind of put some history behind it, but also try to say, yeah, we need to do some more. And so, uh, anyway, board member, oh, yes. Yeah. So, sorry, may I say something? Yeah, Just go ahead, go ahead. Someone who's hoping to be alive when this all uh, <laughs> comes together, uh, is that um, in one of our successful downtown businesses? There you go. There you go. We've, no, we've, I don't think we, he does. But we have three spaces in back yeah. <laughs> that we don't tell too many people about because you know. Oh, oh no, oh no, we don't. <laughs> you think someone watches this? <laughs> so uh, um, I just want to point out that the, uh, the plan I saw dated May 16th of this year uh, for the engineering for the intersection doesn't show any straightening of anything. It, it takes maybe five feet of uh, Colella's land if you start at Grove Street and went up to the entrance, uh, the first entrance on Grove, and you made a straight line, hypotenuse. Uh, it goes from five feet to zero. Yep. Uh, and it doesn't take any spaces, which I, was the big deal. Was going to straighten I, I, down the intersection, I, 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 take spaces. I think, Bob, there's a revision being made to that. Since plan. May 16th, I hope so. Yes. And then the other thing I'd like to point out is that there is a sidewalk to nowhere in front of the post office, and I mentioned this once or twice before, um, that the post office put in when they rebuilt it uh, many years ago. That The area where the sidewalk now is, uh, and it's a, it's a, a double width sidewalk. Um, before, people used to form a lane in the soft shoulder to queue up for the right hand turn. Mm -hmm. Now, when that light is red, you oftentimes see nobody in that storage lane because there's a bottleneck that starts at Cumble at the, the old Cumberland subway. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the cause of the bottleneck uh, is is the sidewalk for the post office. And I've uh, I've um, badgered the town manager and Dave Altario about doing something about it, but it doesn't seem anyone has any power to do anything. There seems to be some cookie cutter design from a white tower somewhere that says, well this is what Hopkinton needs. But it isn't. That intersection is just going to, it's, it's 
not going to be anywhere near the intersection. It could be if that sidewalk stays. Maybe Paul need me reach out to Paul. Maybe he wants to do something about it. He owns it. It's, I, I don't know where the and thank property you for letting me speak. Okay. And, and, and particularly, I'm sure, when they get to the 25% design review, mm -hmm. the state is going to spend lots of hours talking to and listening, hopefully, to comments on the plan. And, you know, I, but anyway, our letter here is to try to give a little context and history and, and, and I think a little support to, I think, the thrust of your your letter. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know. My concerns are uh, people getting hurt on my property that are going to other places. Uh, that's, a, that's a concern. I mean, I do want to work with the town. I do want to be part of the town. Uh, but I also want to be protective of, of our rights. Uh, and I'm afraid I just don't know where, where I don't know where that starts and where that ends. And I don't know how to uh, be supportive but not be silly either, because uh, we, we did pay good, good hard cash for this, this property. I, uh, yes. And, uh, the, uh, thank God the uh, Mr. Uh, I think it's Mar, uh, is that his name? The, the guy next door that, that owns the, uh, he's, he's putting up the... Ma the Great Major. Yeah. Major. 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 Major, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, you know, thank God he decided not to put up the second story, because where, where would these people park? Right. I, I just don't see I, I, I mean, there's a self-limiting type thing that happens if if you build it they might not come because they can't get there. But it, it's even worse, it, it, it becomes a blight. Yep. It really does become a blight. People know that they're going to have a hassle parking, they're going to avoid it. Yep. And, and you know I think the letter also tried to say that the one size, one spot, you know if, if you convert a center school to a parking area as a, as a reuse that really doesn't solve it problem because people in Hopkinton uh, you know just don't don't they're not gonna walk four blocks they're not gonna walk four it. blocks I mean it's it's uh, but unless they're willing to walk four blocks I mean I don't see where there's an answer because you can't get blood out of a stone you've got these properties that were built you know pre-automobile and you know populace that wants to park right in front or not at all and um, well, you know if we build something municipal which we should it's going to be not close to something depending on where you're sure. going I mean people think that walking from the common down to downtown is too far which is nothing by well, uh, as, 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 yes and, and as a, an example I had a meeting at 8 o'clock this morning in, in town hall and there was a line coming eastbound, and I said, ah, oh, do I want to merge into that? So I parked at the Common, which is, I will admit, this is the first for me in 30-something years of parking to the Common to come to the town hall. And, you know, I'm supposed to be exercising more these days. And, and so I didn't mind the one-block walk, and it was a kind of a nice day and all that good stuff. Yeah. But if it had been raining or snowing, I, because there was plenty of parking at 8 o'clock this morning in front of town hall, but, and that would be my normal thing but I took a walk today but and it wasn't all that bad I guess but that's the new me <laughs> and, and yet you know and we're not Wellesley but the town of Wellesley they've got a couple of municipal lots that are highly inadequate and they're hard to find and then they've just got all this commercial and every man for himself and if you can't find a place to park that's just too bad and they a long time ago I guess gave up on trying to have parking requirements because they couldn't. They had a downtown that didn't have the space. And uh, I went down there one time, I think I probably took me longer to find a parking place than it took me to drive from Hopkinton to Wellesley and I parked probably a 20 minute walk away. And, you know, well, it's, 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 we're not Wellesley. It's, it's about to the point it's where, more. you know, there's Two or three spots. I mean, the police station was in the budget. It got shelved with the uh, the free cash issue, but mm -hmm. that'll come back. That'll probably solve some of the 
west of Grove Street, Main Street, yeah. you know, problems with additional s spots there because the uh, the package store over on the other side there loses all the spots there with lanes additions. 3.30 this afternoon, it was 85 degrees, was a single person in Yogurt Beach. There were they were parking a lot of spots up and down the street. It was empty, so mm -hmm. it's hard. So they, they usually come out around. They come out around 7, 8 o'clock. That's when they usually come out. Come out. Yeah. And, and usually the slam from when I was in the ice cream business, that yeah. was from 7 to 9, yeah. 10. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, you're going to need some municipal parking. Yeah. And it has to be close. And we can get, we can get people to, uh, we're not going to get people to change their habits. They're not going to want to walk, especially when it's raining and snowing. Okay. Are there municipal options? Well, the, this, I know the selectmen have been negotiating with bills about have, this have property. Have you behind. spoken with the selectmen about? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Was, ordering, if, did, was this sent on to the selectmen as well or just to, just to us? Uh, I believe it was sent to you guys. So I don't believe it was sent on to the selectmen. No. Okay. Are, are, do they control parking? I wondered whether um, when you do have individual events, sometimes like Robert had a picture of some kind of a road race. There's often road races in the spring, and apparently it seemed they had taken up all the downtown parking places. Um, if, you know, we couldn't at least work with some of these entities that are scheduling events in town like a race to ask the race organizers to, you know, in their race materials, ask their participants not, you know, like designate a, an area, whether it's behind center school or something like that, to um, ask that, you know, if we're hosting them, that they be, be good guests and not take all the spaces and hurt the downtown merchants during the time of their race. These people are runners. They ought to be able to walk a few blocks. But maybe we could be a little more proactive sure. with when there are individual events that come into town that you know could take all the spots. Okay, Chairman, if, yeah. I, if I may add to what Claire is saying, because she did mention yeah. something I had on. I just had it on Saturday as I checked my webcam from home. Uh, I noticed that there was a barrel in front of Lovely <laughs> Lady Salon. Uh, and, uh, and because she needed to say that because it wasn't a race. The running club takes up the spaces in the downtown, they meet in the downtown, and they go off running Great. for, I don't know if it's an hour or two or what, and they, they claim that the, that the one or two or three or however many go get a coffee at Duga, if they're going may later on. Not considering that there might have been another 10 or 20 people who wanted yogurt or wanted coffee, uh, that doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, if someone from the board spoke with them, because um, they told me that after uh, I put that photo up, oh, there was quite a controversy on their closed Facebook page. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, let's try it, because we're running out of time here for the meeting. Uh, are there other comments, questions from the board members about the letter, or suggestions or changes or anything like that? Seeing none, I entertain a motion to uh, to sign the letter for for the uh, for coming from the board planning board. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Where is this letter going? So, so, so this is well, it's going to come back. It, it will be an official letter. Uh, you'll get it okay. with the signature and without a draft and things like that. And uh, okay. Uh, Let's kind of run through a couple things. We'll, let's talk about small subdivisions next at our next meeting. We, we can Thank put that off. Thank, Thank you, Dennis, and thank you for staying. Thank you. Uh, we, we can put the small subdivisions off to one of our next meetings. We were just going to, Elaine and I, when we talked about the first thing tonight, said, well, you know, maybe we ought to have more of a policy talked about in Great. general and then Great. try to fit things to the policy. Makes sense. And, and uh, you know, so let's talk about that and think about it for the next one. Master plan update, the community facilities and services. Elaine? Well, I distribute that, so um, I'll forward that uh, board version to the member who's assigned to check. 
so I'll can, send can that. you clarify what our job is? Because you did all the work of the updating, and then are those uh, poor souls who volunteered that would be me and John? Are we supposed to work on the goals? Are we supposed yeah. to yes. yeah. come up with goals and recommendations and read through the based on your draft? It's missing maybe things to justify the goals and recommendations that you're coming up with as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. So maybe we'll. Okay. And, and we're going to get serious about it. Probably, we got to put the schedule together per Fran's comments too. We're going to work backwards and come up with a way to get yeah. here before, yeah. so we approve it in amongst all the stuff for town meeting by next spring at the latest. Okay. Uh, minutes for the sixth of July, two thousand fifteen. Anyone have any comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion that it was written. I move. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, how about minutes for the 13th of December, or of July, July. 2015? Any comments, questions, revisions? Seeing none, I'll entertain some motions. So move. Move. Second. And second, motion on the table is to approve the minutes for July 13th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. We already talked at the beginning of the meeting, Zoning Advisory Committee. Please volunteer. Yes. Correspondence. We have a late Wayne Davies letter requesting rezoning at the next town meeting of the property that's got the the, the uh, teeth guy the, the one that, the, on, on the Hayden Road <laughs> the, uh, so for the next meeting um, we received correspondence after this after this stuff went out um, from Wayne Davies representing three property owners on Hayden Road looking to extend the commercial uh, business district um, more than they have three parcels. Up to where? Where on Hayden Road? Uh, it includes the pediatric dentist, uh, right. so it's 79, 79. It would go from, it'd go from uh, oh, Irvine, Irvine's northward. Up okay. where it merges with Grove Street. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. So that'll be the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So there'll be some discussion about that. Roy McDowell had some emails, and he has this had to do with mitigation timing with a traffic study. He suggested in his latest correspondence that while the traffic study is due in July, uh, that it's better to do traffic studies when the school's in session, and he would like to have it done until September. And I think that's a good good thing to do. And so basically. Today, all I want to do is, conf is is basically say we're not going to beat them up, and, and that we'll schedule it on our next meeting to to uh, to uh, delay it or approve the uh, the, the delay. Okay. And setting meeting minute dates for September through December. I think uh, Elaine had some proposed dates. If anyone had, it looked like you've all. You avoided all the Monday holidays. But, in this, but there's two meetings back to back. There's two meetings back to back. We. The 14th, that would be September 14th, that would be able to come to its Russia shop. Um, I, we might have to meet another day in December. I, I suspect we're going to get Legacy North plans coming in soon. We're expected, to, I think, to get library plans in soon. Uh, hopefully, we'll finish the solar soon. <laughs> uh, DPW oh, garage okay. will be coming in this this cycle. This cycle, so they can get construction in spring. Uh, Are they looking at a fall town meeting? I couldn't hear what you were discussing. What? I think they're all set. They the DPW is all set. So probably not a Paul Town meeting. No, 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 no. There will no. be one. No, no. I said, are we looking to have yes. a Paul Town meeting? Yeah. We are. 
the uh, we didn't have any able to spend the uh, free cash money, mm -hmm. and there was like there was like a million dollars worth of projects that got postponed from May. So it wasn't certified, correct? Because it wasn't certified. I don't know whether it's certified yet or not. So and what are they looking at? November, October. There, I think this elementary school building committee wants one in November. Early November, right? I think that's what they're planning for, but they're going to be meeting with the state, I think, shortly. I, I, I'm not exactly, I don't remember their, their system. Okay, anything, board members, comments, any future agenda items, please speak up to me or Elaine in the in-between, because we'll be happy to add them to it. And uh, other than that, I think that's everything that seems to be going on that we're really involved in at this point. Construction season is well underway. Absolutely. And uh, anyway, uh, I think we concluded our business. It took longer than I thought today, but we had a lot of good discussions, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. So uh, look for a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. Who else wants to stay? Say no. Everyone else say aye. Aye. Uh, and motion carried.